All right, man, peace. So Jameis Winston, the aspiring, and if he's not careful, the soon-to-be expiring young quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, recently got himself caught up in a sideline tussle with the opposing team's cornerback. They're going to talk about it. Of course, I'm going to chime in. Antonio, we're talking about the other Bucks. Mike Evans is suspended one game for his blindside tackle on Saints cornerback Marshawn Lattimore who got into a shoving match with Jameis Winston. Stephen A., how much of a problem is their quarterback, Winston? Look, before Stephen A. answers, let me say this. I recently did a video on Deshaun Watson, and I listed Jameis Winston amongst the young quarterbacks that I like in the NFL. Jameis better be very, very careful. He's at a tipping point right now, especially being a so-called black quarterback. Uh, he's not going to be able to bounce around the league and, and get multiple starting opportunities. He better be very careful with what he's doing right now. Tampa Bay has has collected a very, very talented roster for him. He really needs to concentrate on overall execution and quarterback play as opposed to being a cheerleader and, and, a bit, and trying to be a motivational speaker. Because the shelf life of a black quarterback in the NFL is not a very long one. They don't get too many chances when, when, when it's shown that they cannot execute game plans and that they're not accurate. Oh, it's a big problem. And I think it's time that we all recognize it. I mean, you know, Lewis Riddick can go to the behavioral issues and what have you. I'm not going to go there with Jameis Winston. What I'm, what I'm going to do is challenge Jameis Winston to look in the mirror and look at his resume. You're 17 and 23 as a starter. Agreed. Agreed. And this season has been by far his most disappointing season, at least last year. He threw for a little over 4,000 yards. He had, I believe, like 26 touchdowns and like 15 picks, which is not really, it's not really good, but it, I wouldn't say it's bad. You know, it's not even two to one touchdown to interception ratio, but, you know, you kind of know what you're going to get with Jameis. He's kind of Brett Farvian in that way. But this season is a big disappointment to have the, the level of talent that they've been able to accumulate for him on this roster with Deshaun Jackson and, and Mike Evans at wide out. And with the kid that they drafted out of Alabama, and you still are unable to, you know, to win games and execute game plans properly with them, that is a that is a big red flag. Seven. And I'm not talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers red flag either. That's a, that's a big ass red flag. Seventeen and twenty three. You play in the NFC South, the same division as Matt Ryan, Cam Newton, and Drew Brees. You have to play better. And oh, by the way, if we're talking about young quarterbacks. In this day and age, is Jameis Winston's name really, really coming up other than the fact that he was a Heisman winner with expectations? Well, that's very, very fair, Stephen A. I bring his name up, but you make a valid point. Is it, is it mostly because of expectations or because of what he's done in the league so far? I think that he's been okay. I, if, I, if I had to gr give him an overall grade for his time in the NFL, I'd probably give him like a, a C+. Plus. I would give Mariota like a B minus, but uh, Winston has to get better very soon because the, the things that Deshaun Watson was doing in a very, very short time really has made Jameis Winston look bad and made his, his growth in the NFL look rather retarded. The last time I saw Jameis, well, people forget about this. He won a Heisman, won a national championship, deserves credit for that. He got annihilated by Mariota in a national semifinal of the playoffs a few years ago. Okay, he comes to the NFL. He has, you know, respectable seasons or whatever, but the Bucs haven't won. I mean, when you look at it from that perspective, he's 17 and 23 as a starter. And I'm looking at Mariota. Mariota is having a better career. Deshaun Watson or Jameis Winston, who would you roll with right now? That's not even close. That's not even close. And it's just going off for of seven games with Deshaun Watson. But that's not even close in regards to who you would take right now. Deshaun Watson has shown an extreme amount of accuracy in his downfield throws, which is the main thing that you have to look at. He has great timing. And the number one thing that he has that Jameis does not have is maturity and poise. All right. Those things take you a long way. That's what Deshaun Watson has. That's also what Mariota has. You want your quarterback to be in control. Uh, you know, a lot of that, that rah, rah, sis, boom, bah, cheerleader shit that Jameis does is going to get old real quick if he does not execute game plans better and learn to be more accurate. And that shit that he did last week with, with putting his fingers in his mouth, talking about that's a W, like dudes looked at him in the huddle like, like who the fuck is this guy? 
Like, guys start to tune you out real quick if you ain't winning games. Like, Ray Lewis could talk all that shit every week and get everybody hyped up because you knew what he was going to bring. Jameis got to get the job done. All that nigga licking his fingers like he a damn stripper or something. Like, what, I'm like, what the hell is this shit? I would roll with Deshaun Watson, and he's got an ACL injury. And I would still roll with him because I haven't been seeing enough from Jameis Winston. You got Deshaun Jackson in offseason. You still got Mike Evans. Doug Martin came back. Drafted O.J. Howard. Offense was some... Yeah, that was a, that's the brother's name, O.J. Howard. Yeah, man. He got all them weapons. Are you not utilizing any of them, man? What's going on? Supposed to be booming. That ain't been the case. And so when I'm looking at it, I mean, listen, I'm not going to sit up there and malign the guy because he's young and people make mistakes. I agree. He still has time. But the last part of this season, going into next season, there has to be, a, there has to be some signs of growth from Jameis. All right. One of his main goals next season should be to throw less than double digit interceptions. That should be a goal for him. If he can throw under 10 interceptions for the season, that's huge. I don't even care how many touchdowns he throws, but his goal should be throw less than 10 interceptions. That will be a, a, a huge leap in growth in regards to his decision making in the passing game. And it's going to show in wins and losses. Behavior wise and ultimately, you know what, I think he'll correct the error of his ways in certain respects. And considering the check and pass, I think he's pretty much been a good citizen. He shouldn't have done that last weekend, but that's fine. It's just a mistake. He'll grow and get over that. I'm more concerned with his absence of production from that quarterback spot, Max. That's this where I'm at with James Winston. I brought up the behavior yesterday and explained why I think it's actually significant for him. And I'm going to get to that in a second. Let me start. I think that that behavior was really a manifestation of his frustration, of, of his ineptitude on the field. And also, of course, the injury. But, you know, when guys have high expectations for themselves and they don't fulfill it, you know, sometimes they look for outlets to express their frustration. Start by saying, smart money was on Mariota out of college. Yeah, he was going to be the better quarterback. And in fact, I made that argument last season that I'd rather have Mariota than Winston. But at this point, I would as well. And really, from early on, I, I wanted to have Mariota over Winston. Now, when they first got drafted, I would have most likely taken um, Jameis over Mariota. No, and that's just that's just from a hopeful perspective with Jameis being a black quarterback, just wanting to see him do well. But after a few weeks, you could see that Mariota was just a guy who was much more buttoned up in regards to his decision making on the field. Uh, Mariota is a guy who if, if his reads are not there, he's just going to tuck the ball down. He's going to make the right decision. Mariota reminds me a lot of Russell Wilson. Jameis Winston gave you the sense when he's at the podium post game, right? When he stands in the pocket. He looks like a quarterback. He lo he sounds like a leader. And I think there's some wish. Well, he sounds like the leader that people in the media would like leaders to be. With all that bombast and, and you know, the Newt Rockney speeches and all that other shit. You know, trying to get people roused up. But I don't care about all that stuff, man. Just get it done on the field. Joe Montana was a quiet dude, but he tore it up on the field. I don't care about all that other shit. Casting here. That we, we people like the cut of his jib. And, no, we're not talking about his behavior in college we're talking about you know off the field we're talking about his on field and post game kind of sense that he gives people kind of reminds you of Roethlisberger right he's a leader he's a guy people can rally behind Roethlisberger Roethlisberger is a is a raping ass dude that's what he is allegedly ain't nobody trying to rally behind no, no damn Ben Roethlisberger ben, ben let me say something and I like Roethlisberger as a quarterback but he's a big baby man that guy's always bitching and complaining Always talking about how he's going to retire. He's just frustrated that he hasn't been able to, to rape a bitch in the last few years. That's what he's mad about, allegedly. And that has, you know, enabled him to skate with some subpar production. I remember five or six games into last season when people were talking, were talking about who was going to be the MVP. Some people said, what about Jameis Winston? The Bucks do well and he continues to perform. I do remember that, especially early last season. He was playing at a pace where people were trying to throw his name in there for the MVP. He has to raise his proficiency and his efficiency levels. He throws way too many interceptions. Right now, with the way that the quarterback position is played, you know, quarterback, uh, for you to win the MVP at quarterback, it's around 40 touchdowns to 10 interceptions around there or better to win the MVP. When you look at the MVP winners, I would say probably the last five years, the touchdown to interception ratio has been around there. 40 touchdowns to about 10 picks or better. That's how he was thought of. Boy, this guy's coming, right? 
But, in fact, what you've seen from Jameis Winston, and I'll tell you, I think his number one problem, he misses open receivers. He Agreed. He overthrows them. He's inaccurate. They should have beat New England. The guy had a... You know, uh, Winston had Deshaun Jackson for, for a fly pattern wide open and just overthrew him. It's like, come on, man. With passes down the field, it seems to. I'm not even going on stats, Stephen A. I'm doing eyeball tests. And when I see issues like that, especially in big spots... Where a guy just misses, where a guy just misses an easy throw like that, that tells me that it's anxiety, that it's nervousness, and that he's not doing enough of a job of visualizing success. A lot of success is about visualization, especially for athletes. You know, he has to work on his visualizing a little bit more, so that when those situations arise, he's not so nervous. He does not deal with all those anxiety issues because he just misses way too many wide open throws, man, especially in big spots. Too often I see him missing guys. Um, and so when you, what you're relying on and when, what people are kind of forecasting for you is largely based on your leadership and attitude and the sense you're giving people. And the way you behave on the sidelines is to do this stuff so that your best player on offense, Mike Evans, comes running in to protect you and winds up suspended a game. Well, Mike Evans is about it. I mean, Mike Evans is looking for a fight. All you got to do, look, check Mike Evans' history, man. That dude comes from a real rough background. When I say a rough background, I'm not talking about like a dude running around committing crime. I'm talking about a dude you know, who came from a very, very rough family background. For those of you who don't know, uh, Mike, Mike Evans is quote-unquote interracial. His dad was so-called black. His mom is so-called Caucasian. And Mike Evans' uncle on his mother's side killed his father. Because his father was beating on his mother. Mike Evans' uncle on his mother's side was an ex-convict who came home from prison and saw his father, Mike Evans' father, hit Mike Evans' mother, who happens to be the ex-convict's sister. And um, Mike Evans' uncle waited for the family to be out one night while he was home alone with uh, Mike Evans' father, and he killed him. So, I mean, it is what it is. As Lewis Riddick says, when do franchise quarterbacks behave that way? Then you're spending the capital that you've seemed to have amassed through your kind of press conference attitude and the way you look on the field and all that stuff. And sure, through your amateur pedigree, you know, your accomplishments as a college player, you're spending that capital fruitlessly. You know, now all of a sudden, fewer people will look at you and say, well, sure, he's inaccurate and he hasn't, the trajectory of his improvement hasn't really gone the way we'd expect. But doesn't he give you the feeling of a franchise quarterback? No. No, but let me tell you, that shit's not going to last much longer. I already said that. That cheerleader shit only lasts you about three years. After that, they start, they're going to start looking at your numbers. If Jameis Winston does not show a pronounced growth in next year's season, they're going to draft another quarterback. And they're going to allow a quarterback competition in the preseason. I guarantee you that. All right. And this day and age, with the way that offense that offenses are running college, they're giving these quarterbacks about two years. By the third year, you better show something. And, and, and after that, you might get one more year if they like you. Because then they're going to bring in a quarterback guru if, if, if you don't already have one. And after the quarterback guru, if you don't show any improvement, everything's going to be your fault. And Jameis already has Dirk Cutter, who's supposed to be a quarterback guru. You see what McVay has done with uh, Jerry Goff out there in L.A. So those are the type of improvements that they're looking for. No, not if that's how he behaves. So that's well, why I think, Stephen A., more than just the production, this behavior on the sidelines is especially bad for Winston. Well, listen, again, I don't have to go to the behavior because I think that when you're young, sometimes you do dumb things. It wasn't any. Well, shit, a lot of old people do dumb shit, too, Steve anything catastrophic it was just dumb and say dumb shit too look at you what you said about uh the nba hoodies dumb but here's the reality i take carson wentz ahead of him yep. i take car I, I take dak prescott ahead of yep. him i take the sean watson ahead of him mm -hmm. right now jerry golf looks better than him oh absolutely jerry golf definitely over him and, yep. and listen some some would say the tyrod taylor's of the world and others Mario. i mean james Winston. <laughs> tyrod taylor can get some honorable mention I like Tyrod. Uh, Tyrod throws a very, very nice ball. He just has trouble from the pocket. But I, but I would also take Mariota over Jameis right now. But, you know, the, the NFL is in a, in, a, in a very good place right now with young quarterbacks. And, and, and Mariota, of course. He's not even in the top five in terms of young talent. Yep. That's right. It's a problem.
No question. When we come back, gentlemen. But anyway, that's that's my take on Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston is on watch right now. He better watch himself. Okay, he better get his act together and cut the bullshit out. But anyway, peace.